Man, what is poppin' guys? We are back here today on Pokemon Showdown with another competitive analysis video, metagame rambling, whatever you want to call it. This time we are talking about everyone's favorite shark, Garchomp, unless your favorite shark is like Sharpedo or something, which I don't know. I like Sharpedo, but whatever. We're not talking about that. So Garchomp, let's hop right into it. So Garchomp introduced in Generation 4. Uh, it was deemed too powerful for OU and went to Ubers, and it was pretty great in Gen 4 Ubers, actually. Generation 5 came around and it was banned from OU initially, then retested, and then it had Sandvale banned on it. And now Garchomp uh, is just in black and white OU. It's a great Pokemon to this day. And yeah, uh, Gen 6. Garchomp was pretty decent in Gen 6 uh, for the most part. Um, there were a variation of sets that were run Scarf, Swords Dance, and uh, Rocky Helmet. But nowadays in Oras, you only really see Rocky Helmet. I have used Garchomp uh, a number of times in tournament. And I think I've won almost every single time I've used Helmet Chomp. And I've always used uh, Helmet Chomp when I use Garchomp. Scarf and SD have fallen down in usage just because they have competition from other Pokemon. Um, Scarf is okay, but SD in general does not see a lot of usage. And now we're here in Gen 7, where Garchomp has gone up and down in terms of usage. And in today's metagame, uh, it's pretty common, especially with the Swords Dance, Stone Edge, Earthquake, Rocky, and Z-Stead. So that's basically the backstory of Garchomp through generations. Now, let's basically talk about it in Gen 7 and, you know, just see how it's doing. So I got four sets here for the majority of what Garchomp runs. So let's talk about the first set. Stealth Rock, Swords Dance, Stone Edge, Earthquake at Rock MZ. So this is basically what everyone's running these days. Um, a very excellent set. The reason this set, I think, took off so much in recent months is because Zygarde was banned and then it didn't have really any reason to run a Dragon type move. Edge Quick coverage has always been amazing, and with Rocky MZ, you're able to really um, just break through even neutral resists, stuff like Lotties. Can't really switch in on a Z Stone Edge, it does too much. Uh, and yeah, the coverage in general is just really, really nice on a Pokemon like Garchomp. The speed is still great at 102 speed, it's still a, a really nice Stealth Rocker, and it is one of the few Stealth Rockers that is able to deal with Heatran. A lot of the times, if you're running Stealth Rock Landorus or, you know, what, Ferrothorn, those things can't switch into fire to fire type moves or anything like that. So Garchomp is really nice in that sense. That it's something that can offensively punish Heatran. Um, this set is also nice uh, because I mean, just ground coverage in general is really nice. Offensive ground types are very nice. So it's nice that there is room for a Stealth Rocker that isn't Landorus T. Because not every time or do you want to run that Pokemon. I mean, Garchomp has a lot of benefits. Again, like we said, it has a fire resist, um, higher base speed. I know that you know ties into a lot of games a lot of the time. So yeah, this is basically the most seen set, very reliable rocker in today's metagame. Garchomp has a good natural bulk as well, and then Z Stone Edge lets it just take care of Tornadus in one hit as well, which is one of the premier defoggers in the metagame. Um, the other set of this, I guess the brother set to this, is Dragonium C. Now we used to see this set so much back in the day, um, but it has really fallen off in favor of Z Stone Edge, and the reason for that is honestly, I mean, uh, this set just doesn't have the coverage anymore i mean you could still run it it's still a decent set because z dragon is so strong but in general it kind of sucks when you're completely walled by tapu bulu and stuff like that it's also really easy to bait z outrage not to say that it's not easy to bait z continental crush and you can go to your steel or something like that but i mean um you can completely lose your z outrage if you pull it off on a fairy and stuff like that uh, and in general edge quake is just easier coverage to get away with um even this guard jump is walled by celesteela and stuff like that even if plus two does do a lot but this is still a set you can definitely run um you just have to kind of uh i feel like your team has to be more structured wrong like it's your team is more uh compressed if you're running this garchomp um and also if misty terrain is up that really sucks as well uh if that's another reason i think this one dropped in usage a little bit because tepu fini is so high in usage lately and it decreases garchomp's power but these are basically the two offensive garchomps sd um both seen as like the offensive stealth rock options in this metagame i feel like the, my favorite offensive stealth rockers if i had to give a top three would be uh landers t is up there for sure with the yachi berry offensive set and the z move offensive set i would put heatran up there i would put garchomp up there i don't even like using garchomp that much but i think it's pretty uh what's it called consistent at its job and then i'd say komoo is up there too komoo is kind of a crazy pick but it depends on the matchup but anyway yep these are the offensive rock set so next we have the Rocky Helmet set for Garchomp. Um, Stealth Rock, Earthquake, Roar, Toxic. Now this is a set I run. You can run Fire Blast if you want to be able to hit Kartana and Scizor, but I like running Toxic because nowadays a lot of people are running Rotom um, and Tornadus, and it's really nice to be able to hit those Pokemon on the Switch. 
uh, or if they're just in front of you because if you're able to hit them with a toxic they have a lot more trouble uh, stopping you from keeping up rocks because normally they would just be able to defog forever if you could if you just had to drag and tell them as your only way of touching them but if you're able to go for toxic you're able to get a lot of residual chip and that's really nice so yeah this set just max defense impish uh 255 speed for magirna it's pretty good i mean pretty basic you can run dragon tiller fire blast or whatever if you don't want to run roar and toxic but i like roar and toxic because this thing plays support the best honestly kind of impressed with this set i thought it was gonna be stupid but in the game i used it it was not bad it was not bad so all in all um i think this set is pretty effective i mean it's the same as it was in gen 6 even in gen 5 there was a, a rocky helmet guard chop obviously back then they ran dragon tail um and even they ran a bit of speed uh, in Gen 6 and Gen 5 too. Here, there's not really a need for speed. <laughs> not need for speed, but I think you only really need to be faster than Magirna. And, I mean, Garchomp is uh, only needs a little bit of speed to be faster than Magirna. So this set, yep, just physical tank. But, again, Garchomp is just doing what it does best in this metagame, which is put up Stealth Rock. Um, yeah, I mean, it is one of the Pokemon that can take on most of the hazard removal in the tier. And that's why it's a popular pick in general. I mean, even going back to the offensive versions. So if we think of who... Can rapid spin and defog in this tier let's look in rapid spin and ou let's look so we have extra drill right that's it obviously cannot deal with garchomp so that's great let's go to defog and ou let's see who's there um charizard x charizard y they lose rockium z beats Zapdos. mew definitely a good counter with ice beam but if you're dragon z it's finished scissor definitely cannot reliably beat sd chomp skarmory dies to z rock pelipper dies to z rock uh gliscor can die to uh z rock into regular plus two stone edge um, or it could even die to Z-Dragon, Rotom again, plus 2 Z-Rock, so you can see what I mean, plus 2 Z-Rock in general, um, Edgequake coverage in general basically kills all defoggers, so Garchomp uh, really shines in the fact that it's able to keep rocks up versus a lot of stuff, it's natural bulk lets it take most neutral moves as well, like it can take Superior Leaf Storm, it can take even Supersonic Sky Strike, um, it can take plus 1 Volcarona and Bug Buzz, not Z-Boost, uh, not Z-Move boosted, but it can take uh, plus 1 just regular Bug Buzz, which is crazy can take coco hpis etc etc garchomp's bulk is very very nice uh, which is great and this thing was kind of just decreasing in usage because it was so much easier to run zygarde and obviously they're not similar pokemon it's not like zygarde goes for sd or it gets up rocks or anything but they're similar typing so it's hard to incorporate both on a team if you're gonna go double ground you you usually have zygarde and then maybe landers t but even then um teams that share like two ground types oftentimes aren't the best bet synergy wise but even then the reason people run Zygarde over Garchomp is because Zygarde could just offer so much more with that typing. You know, you could glare, you could substitute, you could sweep much more often too. And that's why I think Garchomp's usage was down. Um, but this new SD Stone Edge Earthquake set that developed after Zygarde's ban has really made Garchomp come into its own and be one of the most um, threatening and effective Pokemon in the metagame. I'm happy this thing rose again in usage because uh, I had a lot of problems with it at one point. I was like, man, this thing is not good. I even ran back in uh, Gen 7, one of the few times I ran Garchomp in tournament. I ran uh, Source Dance, Dragon Claw, Earthquake, Fire Fang, Citrus Berry. Such a weird set. Hey, but uh, it worked out in Gen 7. But then the last set, just Scarf. You know, typical. Um, this set has been around in every generation. In Gen 5, it was truly the menace. Uh, this thing was amazing back in Gen 5. Um, Outrage, Earthquake, Fire Blast, Toxic is the set I'm running on this. Uh, basically, Outrage and Earthquake are just your staff coverage. Uh, Fire Blast is just to hit Ferrothorn, Scizor, Cartana, all that stuff. Uh, be able to hit them hard. Oko, Cartana, maybe Oko, Scizor after rocks. And Toxic is just on the stuff that's going to be able to repeatedly come in on you. Um, so, like, I guess like Rotom that could switch at one time. Landers T. Uh, Scarf Garchomp, hit or miss. I mean, it's a good Scarfer because it is fast. It's going to be a lot faster than stuff like Scarf Landers T. Um, Scarf Jirachi, you know, the classic stuff. Uh, but you're still slower than Scarf Cartana, Scarf Greninja stuff like that so i don't know it's not like the best it's it's okay scarf uh garchomp is okay and then finally i'll show some teams that i have had garchomp on that i have had decent luck with so let me go through my garchomp teams so this one you can see the first one here this is just rocky helmet we already used this team in a live before let's see what else i have this one agent double o chomp you guys will see this soon this is a really nice team. So, I really like this team. This will be like the application, I guess, because it has SD Garchomp plus SD Landris 
which gives way for Lopini uh, to sweep late game. So the dual ground, because like I said, uh, when I was talking about that Zygarde plus Landers or Zygarde plus Garchomp, double ground in general is pretty weak synergy wise, but you can sometimes get away with it. And Garchomp Landers are able to get away with it because on this team, they're both Swords Dance, which is cool. So Garchomp's able to put on pressure against Defoggers to keep rocks up, and then Landers T is also able to lure in another wall and kill it. So when you have two Swords Dancing ground types with obscene attack, you're able to basically force the opponent to have to sack one of their counters at the very minimum and the other one should go in in theory and then um if you do lose both of these hopefully you've done enough damage to where lopini can win scarf grand can clean stuff like that so this is a really great team that my buddy bengay gave me i was really impressed with this when i used it and in general um i think this really helps an offensive chomp shine offensive chomp i think is best on offense for sure past that with garchomp guys um don't really got too much to say i mean mega chomp obviously exists uh Swords Dance and mixed with Draco and Fire Blast. Uh, two great sets. I just didn't include them because, I mean, it's a different Pokemon than Garchomp, but obviously two great OU threats. But yeah, I'm happy Garchomp's coming to its own. You guys will see the Garchomp live soon, and I'll catch you next time. Peace.